Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Failfast in food manufacturing and this is a bit more of a pep talk than anything but I think it's important to talk about failure and Failfast methodology as part of a product development cycle and we're going to quote the wonderful Doug Hall who constantly says in his writing fail fast fail cheap and his principle is as an innovator, as someone who is in an innovation practice, you have to be willing to say not every single idea that you come up with is going to be the million dollar idea. And you've got to be able to move on and dissociate the concepts that you go about developing from yourself. And that's honestly a big deal for so many students who walk in and say, oh man, I can't come up with a good idea today. I, I suck at product development and so on. And I'm like, no, you are a good product developer. You are just in a space where you are unwilling to move on from an idea and move into a space where you're going to be much more uh, fruitful and capable of generating those ideas. So at the end of this video, you will be able to define why acknowledging failure and embracing failure is an important part of the innovation cycle and differentiate and dissociate failure of ideas from personal growth. And I want to have this talk because so many students get in that groove where they're like, I am so bad at this, I can't do this anymore. And they're like, no, you have so much raw talent. You are just stuck on an idea and you need to let that idea go. And that's part of fail fast. So in fail fast so much of the uh so much of the challenge is the amount of overthinking that occurs so many people uh invest a lot of mental energy and a lot of creative energy and a lot of uh, physical time and resources into ideas and it's hard for um many uh, young innovators to go about building up that idea and getting out of the idea space to getting stuff in the marketplace. And honestly, that's one challenge of fill fast methodology that I see a lot of that people think and think and think and think, and they don't take time to get the right efficiency resources in place so that that thought process becomes streamlined and they just think and think and think in circles and they never get an idea out there so that people can start to get feedback about the quality of that product. So that's the first aspect of fail fast that um, based off of my experience teaching for more than 10 years and working in the innovation space for as long, if not longer, sometimes it's important to, uh, to really use efficiency and think enough, but then move on and make stuff, move on and do stuff. And that's an important part. Another piece of the puzzle is cognitive bias in that oftentimes as people are developing ideas, they have this, uh, what, what they call a subjective social reality. And they abs 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 subscribe all of these emotional attachments to the idea without any sort of um, factual reality out there. Um, Lots of entrepreneurs come in and say, oh, my, my family says this is the best product ever and they love it and I think I want to sell this product. And you get a few other people who don't have the same emotional relationship with this person, try that product and the product is, is eh, horrible. <laughs> and unfortunately, I've had to try some of those products as, as uh, small business clients uh, come into the innovation center or come in and ask questions about commercialization activities. It's so important to get some frank opinions about the ideas that you're working on and step outside of the subjective reality that you're in with your family and your friends and your spouse or partner wanting to support you and your ideas and actually get some factual um, evidence. I think of, um, I've also had entrepreneurs come in and they say, oh, well, I have this wonderful idea. I've never uh, seen it in the marketplace, et cetera, et cetera. I want to commercialize this. I think this will be a product that will have 
huge market potential and then I will open up um, a few different uh, websites and we'll do a quick competitive analysis and we'll realize that whoa wait a second this product is heavily commercialized and the product perhaps is already saturated but just because the entrepreneur has never gone out and seen it in the marketplace doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the marketplace and so do make sure to step out of your own realm of bias as part of the innovation cycle next one that aspect of build, measure, learn, and that cycle, and you, I could have overlaid my PDSA cycle from W. Edward Stemming. I, I have to give him props in pretty much every presentation. But uh, that aspect of going out and having a continuous improvement cycle or some sort of quality improvement cycle it, there's, is honestly an aspect of stepping outside of your ego that's really important. There are times when you need to know when you are right and be able to push that I know my facts, I know I'm correct agenda. And then there's other times when you need to be able to step aside from your ego and know when it's important to keep on building and measuring and learning and growing in that cycle. I think of a, a project that I was doing in the springtime. I was more of an observer than a researcher, but it was really, really fascinating. It was a project with the with the federal government and they were looking at educators and the educators ability to teach technical topics and it was fascinating because um, many of these educators are considered experts in their field but when you looked at the expertise and the capability of delivering against the current technological standard what was fascinating was many of these experts in the field had not any awareness of the current state of the technology and so they were teaching historical content and what was fascinating on further interviews was the fact that these educators weren't able to step outside of their expert hat if i could use that term and step outside of their ego to say well wait a second i have more things to learn i always i always tease everyone in my videos saying i have lots of things to learn too and i love going on that learning journey with you and it's, it's very, very different than the traditional didactic teaching approach of the teacher as the expert and the student as the, as the uh, space that the knowledge is being funneled into. I, I personally see learning as a, as a continuous improvement cycle. And for me as, a, as an educator, I have to continuously improve myself so that I can continuously deliver better content to the people that I'm teaching. So... That PDSA cycle lives in everything. The thing is, PDSA, plan do, if I can use the, the, the uh, actual PDSA, in this cycle here, you've got to go out and do stuff. You can't just sit and plan. You can't just sit and study. You have to do stuff. You have to build stuff. And so don't just sit in your head. Don't. <laughs> There's a concept called the minimally viable product, and this term came from the tech sector. And we, we've talked in some of our slideshows about um, agile in product development and project management. Minimally viable product, the concept is um, you've got to get something out to the marketplace and you've got to get a minimally viable product out there. I joke that this video series is a minimally viable product. A lot of a lot of people have said, "Well, you know, you could you could have more editing, you could have more gloss and more more fancy pants stuff and you could script your your videos better." But honestly, right now I'm focused on a minimally viable product. I want to make sure that I am out there creating videos and getting content out. Same with food product development. At a certain point, you've got to have a product in people's hands. Now that said, be really cognizant of the context of that product. So, for example, I have seen uh, a lot of chef-type entrepreneurs present a product that they would be normally presenting in their food service. Let's say I'm making soup, and I'm making a food service soup, and I put that food service soup in a jar just the same way I would have made from a food service recipe, and say, that's my minimally viable product. Well, it's good, it may be a great quality, but it may not be safe. You may need to be doing additional pasteurization or retort processing on that product to make sure that it's the right context. And so don't 
overhype your minimally viable product unless it's contextually correct. But at a certain point, you've got to have a product out there and start evaluating its performance. And you can do that in a wide variety of different ways. Does this mean test marketing a product? Does it mean um, making a, sh a small run of product under a different label and positioning it differently? Does it mean if you're a student putting a product in front of your professor instead of just uh, handing notes over? <laughs> at a certain point, you've got to get out there and do stuff. Going back to Doug Hall's comment about fail fast, he says fail fast, fail cheap. I've also heard the term fail fast and fail hard. In the product development game for food products, about 25% of new products make it past one year and only 5% make it past two years. Honestly, it's important to realize that there's innovation churn that goes on in this sector and you've got to be able to track the financial viability of your product so that you know when it's time to move on. It's important to have that bookkeeping. Again, the context of these, of these uh, videos is more about the food science and the product development sphere. And I can't stress enough the importance of finance and uh, business management accounting. Track your sales. Know when things are on the upswing and it's worth pursuing. Know when sales are plateauing and flattening out and decide if it's worth pursuing additional growth strategy. Is it worth going after new marketing campaigns? Know who is buying it. Is it worth going after customers who perhaps aren't buying it at this point? Or if you're seeing plateauing or decreasing sales, know when it's time to move on to a new idea. There's all sorts of different points at which you want to fail fast and fail hard in the product development cycle. Honestly, I can't stress enough how important it is to do strategy and development and understand who you're marketing to and who your uh, market segment's going to be, what's your to retail strategy, because each of those elements is going to indicate the success of your product. From there, you want to go through your design and development phase and early stage commercialization. You've got to ask those core questions. How feasible is this product? How cost effective is it? How um, readily can we get the various ingredients through the supply chain and so on. You go to launch and post-launch, you've got to be at a, at a point where at any point in this process, you're capable of saying, you know what, let's pull the plug. Let's stop this product. And it's important to be able to dissociate that idea and that process from you. This is one of the hardest things that uh, young product developers face is that there are times when you have to say, you know what, I'm walking away from a job or I'm walking away from a concept and that investment isn't a failure of you. It's sometimes just a failure of the product. And I've had lots of uh, teary-eyed conversations with young product developers saying, I'm no good at this. I'm going to quit. I'm going to go become a, I don't know, serve coffee at a coffee shop or something. And meanwhile, it was just the wrong idea at the wrong time. And meanwhile, this person is full of talent and full of uh, capability. It's just not all products work. And that's just the nature of this business. You've got to be willing to move on. You've got to be willing to take those punches and focus on the fact that your products and your ideas are different from you. And honestly, there, you, you can improve yourself. Not all, not all product ideas are worth improving. And it's not worth pushing an idea to, uh, to the demise of a company or to the demise of, of um, all of your finances and investment. Be willing to pivot and turn on failed ideas and go focus on new ideas, new strategies, and new plans. Now, at some point in this process, someone's going to yell at you, and it's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I've been teaching for uh, more than 10 years and I've had lots of students show up in my office going, this teacher yelled at me and I am such a failure and I'm going to drop out of school. And it's okay if you know that you are putting your best effort in, but it's just a bad idea and the wrong time. That's a very different thing than a student or 
a product developer is someone who's just not putting effort into a good idea and deserves to be um, chastised in the process. It's a very, very different scenario. And I've seen, I've seen uh, young product developers walk into my office again, teary eyed. I, I keep a box of napkins. <laughs> They're actually dining napkins in my office just for the cause. Um, and it's very easy to differentiate who is, who is putting in a lot of effort, but just has the wrong idea at the wrong time. So much of this is subjective. And honestly, you can go in and pitch the best, uh, the best product. Uh, if the timing is off, if the retail segment is saturated, if the retailer is trying to reduce number of SKUs and not increase SKUs, you could have a fantastic product but just the wrong timing, space, etc. versus you haven't put in that effort. Know the difference and be able to differentiate between the two. It's normal to face failure in this process. You'll go out and give a fantastic pitch and nobody wants your product. That's At some time, that just means go and reposition your product. And other times it means go and, um, go and try a new product. You've got to be able to have a bit of intuition between the two. Failure is a good thing. Failure is part of that PDSA cycle. Figure out where you need to be and focus on better ventures. Grow. Know full well that there's lots and lots of opportunity for uh, people in food product development. In Canada, I've mentioned this in a number of different presentations, the labor market shortage is acute for food professionals. Just because maybe food product development isn't the thing for you, doesn't mean there's not other opportunities in food manufacturing. It could be in technical sales. It could be in business management. It could be in operations. There's so many different ventures that you can uh, can um, explore. Main thing is don't stop growing in the process. Keep on growing where you need to be. And know full well as students, um, so many of uh, the young people who are in this program come in and they're full of ambition and full of life. And I always say to the students who join our program, I am here to support you as a person first and as a food scientist second. And so rest assured, I like you the way you are. And if you decide you want to go drive a bus or be an electrician or um, go take on a different career, that's okay too. Um, keep on growing. That's the most important thing in life, I think. Honestly, um, I think failure is not a bad thing. I Back when I started my career as a food scientist, I thought I was going to first be a cheesemaker. Well, I'm not a cheesemaker. I still enjoy uh, studying cheese and learning about cheese, but I am not even uh, remotely expert at cheese. But it's something that I still am very passionate and interested in. I then thought I was going to be a uh, full-on research scientist, and I pursued that for a period of time, and I realized that it didn't bring me the same level of satisfaction that teaching would bring me. And I really feel that there's an important niche to be played by having high quality food science education and really honing in on the labor market requirements. Um, that practical uh, edge to me is why I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. But that at the same time, I'm always hustling and finding new things to challenge myself. And so I keep learning new things. I'm learning video editing. I'm learning how to play the recorder. <laughs> I, I always find things that you can keep growing yourself and growing your mind and growing your heart and your passion for life. Anyways, I think that's it for this slideshow. It is. Rest assured, I support you in whatever you want to do. Reach out to me. Ask questions. Learn. Keep growing. And we'll talk to you soon.